Hello there gentle people. I hope you all are doing well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the herbs and do I have any flowers? No. Yeah. Well, one. So some herbs uh, and one of them is a flower that is pretty awesome for women's health. Uh, I'm actually taking a class right now called the Feminine Way of Plant Medicine. Uh, we haven't gotten down into the different formulations or anything as yet, but I just pretty much went to my little in-home apothecary and just pulled all these different herbs to share with you. So the very first one that we're going to talk about is... Let me open it up so you can see it. And everything I'm going to share is dried, okay? So this is black cohosh. Um, black cohosh is very good for menstrual cramps. It is good for PMS and is also good for menopause as well. And with all these herbs, you can pretty much make tinctures or teas. And I'm going to talk about that in a different video. But anywho black cohosh for cramps pms and menopause the next one is chamomile some people say chamomile um it's anti-inflammatory and it has a chemical constituent called glycine in it and glycine helps to relieve spasms it kind of works as a relaxant so that is chamomile chamomile however you prefer to say it and the next one is cramp bark right so cramp bark is awesome for any kind of cramps obviously that's why it's called cramp bark <laughs> for cramp relief it's good for pain and it's also good for postpartum spasms as well um or any pain so after you have your baby it is good um, for any pain and during the time that you have a period. All right, so cramp bark is another one. I also have some stinging nettle hair, which they actually do sting you when they're like fresh. So you have to be very mindful of that. But stinging nettle or nettle leaf is pretty much a uterine tonic and it has vitamins a vitamins c d and k it also has calcium potassium iron and sulfur as well so uh again one of the main things for this is a uterine tonic all right so that's very good for women's health as well uh the next one is passion flower and um, passion flower is a pain reliever all right it works as a mild sedative and in a lot of cultures they actually give this to children to help them sleep at night i make a tea out of it with some other different ingredients for my son to help him sleep at night it's also good for stress and depression and it helps to calm your nerves so this is a very good one to mix in any blends for women's health as well this one here is wait no not this one yet this is peppermint leaf and this peppermint actually comes from my father's farm in jamaica so the last time my mother went to jamaica she picked it and she put it out in the sun to dry and she brought it back so that's why it still looks whole because i actually picked them off of the stems so this is peppermint and peppermint is good for relieving nausea and it helps with bloating and indigestion and a funny little backstory when i was in high school i went to an all girls high school right so in the nurse's office the woman had this tiny little bottle of peppermint oil like the essential oil and anything that was wrong with you the nurse would give you like a cup of hot water and you were only allowed to put two drops of peppermint oil in there you could not go over two drops or you'd be in trouble with the nurse and let me tell you to this day like the girls i went to high school with we still joke about it because that woman like if you came in there with like a swollen eye two drops of peppermint headache two drops of peppermint cramps two drops of peppermint like that woman's remedy for everything was two drops of peppermint but but anywho, the next one is raspberry leaf. And raspberry leaf is also a uterine tonic, uh, pretty much like nettle leaf. 
and it also has a lot of vitamins in there. So it has um, the B complex vitamins, there's vitamin A in here, C, D, E. This also helps with anxiety as well and it helps to relax the, the stomach muscles. So raspberry leaf is another good one for women's health. Actually, you know what, let me just kind of, I'll, I'll do that after, line them out after. Um, the next one is one of my absolute favorites. I've been using this one for years. It's called Valerian. So Valerian root. Valerian root smells awful. You can smell it a mile away. But it is very good because it works as a sleep aid. It's a pain reliever and it helps with anxiety as well. So um, this is one where like if you're on any kind of uh, depression, antidepressant medicine or anxiety medicine, definitely talk to your doctor first. Um, but if you're going to be like driving around and stuff during the day, don't make a tea out of valerian because valerian helps to promote good sleep. All right. And the next one, let me see, where is it? I'm looking for my willow bark. Okay, this is white willow bark. And here's the deal with white willow bark. It has something in it called salicin, which is the active chemical constituent of aspirin. So if you're allergic to aspirin, then you definitely can take white willow bark. But it is very, very good for you. Um, it is literally aspirin. This is like natural aspirin. Um, so that's where these chemists got their ingredients from and another one is dandelion leaf dandelion leaf and have the root here as well uh these are good uh during uh the month when you're having a period because they're pretty much diuretic so they help to relieve bloating all right so that's a dandelion leaf and then the St. John's wort, which is this one here. St. John's wort, you've probably heard of. It's very good for depression. And um, if you have any anxiety, anything like that. This is another one that you need to check with your doctor as well if you're on any kind of antidepressants. But it's very effective uh, for that. So again, um, we have... The, oh, wait, I almost forgot. Because this one is kind of done. Because I used up all of it to make this chai the other day. This is dried ginger root. And ginger root, you know, is very warming um, for your insides. It helps with digestion. Very, very good during the time when you have your period as well. So, again, I'm just going to lay them out for you so that you can see everything at one time. I have the ginger hair, dandelion root, dandelion leaf. St. John's wort, some white willow bark, valerian, raspberry, some nettle, passion flower, cramp bark, chamomile, black cohosh, and peppermint and ginger. Another one that I want to kind of give an honorable mention to is mugwort. So the deal with mugwort is if you have difficulty with your period, if you have difficulty with menstruation, uh, mugwort is a very good one to use for that because what it does is it it helps to regulate your period. Um, so mugwort is good for that. So I wanted to make sure to mention that. And how I kind of use them is I'll make tinctures. So this one has um, black cohosh. It has some mugwort and it also has mullein leaf in there. And pretty much I put the herbs in there and top it off with alcohol, right? So I think this is just vodka. In Florida, I know there are other states where you can get um, Everclear, which is like 190 proof, but Florida is one of those places where it's illegal. So I think the most that we'll go up to is 150, which is what I have in here. And um, you can also use oils as well, like an infused oil. So I'll get down into that more in, you know, some upcoming videos. But I definitely wanted to share these with you when you have your period. It is one of the things that I've struggled with um, throughout the years, ever since I was a little girl. So these are some of the herbs that you can mix up in any kind of little different formulation for whatever you need. Um, 
sometimes I feel like just mixing all of them together and making one big thing um, but I'll do another video where I show you how to make a very specific tea um, for women's health all right so I hope you found it helpful and um, if you have any questions drop them in the comments below all right thank you for your time your energy your presence as always and I will talk to you soon peace